except when I threw five picks against Southern Cal. <laughs> but I want to say that I've got a lot mature in my older age. I no longer have any answers or questions I'm written on my hand. <laughs> you guys know back then? But I do have 50 years right here. But, uh, I want to, well, there's one guy in the crowd tonight who no one's going to understand what's on this whiteboard and, until I turn it around. One guy's going to know. So I want to do that real quick here while we start. <coughs> Does anybody know what that means? I'm not over there though. Where's Jim Julian? Do you remember that? That's how old we are. When I was a sophomore, we started having a little success. Jim came to my room and he says, the, 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 the autograph doesn't work, pal. You gotta get something more, a little more flamboyant. This was my first autograph, and this was Jim's autograph for me. So I, I carried that on ever since. So thank you, Jim. You know you're all along with this on your own. Now. But in, in all Notre Dame functions, you know, there's a, there's a commercial. Thank you earlier today, and uh, you know how we're always putting different classes together. Who raised it? Is 69 do better, 68 or 67, or whatever? Well, they've come up with a, a, a different deal. Well, they're going to take our whole class, and they're going to pair everybody together. There'll be two people, and whoever donates the most money of those two people will receive a Dolly Duffy autograph book on a lot of silence crowds. One guy gets it. <laughs> but, uh, but that's true. But we had the, the first drawing today. So the, of the two guys together, it's a blind drawing. You go on the line, you look up your name, and you go right next to it. It's going to be your, your companion to see who raised the money, most money. So I was very fortunate today when I drew my partner, and it was Jay Jordan. <laughs> but there are many things that, uh, I think a lot of things when we were here were, we had unique professors back then. I know when I went home my freshman year, and uh, you know, we had our finals, that's before we started playing bowl games, so we had a normal Christmas vacation like everybody else. So I went home, and and she said, Terry, you got an A in calculus. <laughs> I said, yeah, Mom. She said, I knew you were always good in math. They come around A, and I said, you got another A in calculus. And yeah, I was Professor Klein all the way. <laughs> and we had another wonderful priest that taught astronomy, Father Schultz. And this was the damnedest thing, because we had a quiz when we went off on top of uh, Newman Center. And you had to, you had the telescope, and you had to sort of move around to find the stars up in the sky. And all the upper class, I don't know what, you know, I knew the moon. <laughs> so all the other upper classes that all you have to do is move the telescope and make it look like you're looking for a planet up there. And I thought, this can't be true. So we went off on top of the center, and it was my turn to Terry, okay, step up here. And, uh, he said, I'm going to start you out easy. He said, you can hear from this, right? Yeah. He said, I'm going to start you out easy. I want you to find the moon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Father, we've got it right here. Okay, now find Saturn for me. <laughs> All right, I'm starting to see the rings right now. <laughs> There's Saturn. He said, okay, now find your anus for me. I'm going to bring it <laughs> Who took Irish history? Yeah. Yeah. 
Father Murray? What was the one of the tests we had? Anybody remember? You had to write the Our Father in Gaelic. True. Myself, Dusty, and Blasio. Harpo, where's Harpo? Stand up. Harpo. For some reason, all these stories I want to tell are going to be the three of us, so I always want to introduce you to one. But uh, we had Father Murray, and we're, you know, we're going to come up on a test on Friday to write the Irish, or write our Father and Caleb. But we had a game that weekend away, so we had to travel. So we had to get a makeup. So after the game, we came back. Sunday night, we go to Father Murray's place. He has three chairs, me, Josh, and Harpo. <laughs> Sit in the chair. He said, okay, you guys know what you got? You got to write, write to our father and get it. So we sit down in a chair. <laughs> we look up, and there's this huge banner with the our father and get it. <laughs> and we look at one another and say, is this a trick? <laughs> so I told Tosha, you missed the third word. Harpo, you missed the eighth word. And we made it through. <laughs> Dushy was sort of one of his pet guys at practice, and every time he would uh, make a mistake, Eric would call him over and say, bend over and touch your ankle, and he'd kick him in the ass, right? <laughs> and after a while, Ron go, I like that. So one day, right before practice, Eric would start coming out and said, you can tell he's really pissed off for some reason. And uh, so when practice doesn't even start, and he said, Dutchie, get over here. He said, what the hell is going on now? He said, grab your ankles. He, not, he said, I know damn well you're going to screw up today. Boom. <laughs> and Dutchie said, maybe I'll catch another one later. <laughs> but uh, we had, you know, our sophomore year, we won the national championship around California, and, you know, Cody had a great time. Yeah. Lake bruise of black and blue on Lake Heaton crutches, and Dusty was doing something. I'm not sure why. <laughs> they ruined us all again, which was another bad idea. <laughs> but we obviously we weren't playing. You know, Colby had the great game when crushed Southern Cal. And uh, so afterwards, we go out to a bar, and it was called the Body Shop. <laughs> and all to do with automotives. <laughs> And we had made a few stops prior to that, and neither of us were 21. So we made a few stops prior to that, and Harpo was well over-served. <laughs> and he was on crutches. So Dush and I looked at each other and said, we're going to the body shop, there's going to be spectacular cars in there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I give the, the taxi driver 20 bucks, and we're right up the hill of it, with the uh, Beverly Hills Hilton there, the big, Deal there. And I said, take him home. Harpo. So Dush and I jump out, close the door real quick, and Harpo's looking out the back with the door, yelling, screaming. We go in, and we work, learn everything about a carburetor, plugs and points and gas and all that stuff. And about four hours later, we said, well, let's just walk back to the hotel. So we get close to the hotel, and she's put 20 foot pillars in the bushes, right? And we are God damn it! Let me out! You can't kidnap me! Let me out! Well, here's Harpo, who dropped his hood out, in the bushes for three hours, with his crutches, whacking away with the bushes, trying to get out. <laughs> right, Harp? <laughs> How many of you guys are in my Russian class? One. I think we're more. Two. I only took one year, so we stopped right there. I mean, how are you? How you doing? But we had a, we had a nun, Sister Sophronia. Right. How that day? And really bad looking. So, like, I took two years of French in high school, right? 
So I, you know, you had to take a one-year language and learn that. No big deal. Ba -ba, one year French. Mike DeChico, a great leader, passed away. He says, "You're taking Russian." I said, Why would you want to do that to me? He says, "There's a new teacher coming in. It's a sister. Now, how bad can this nun be on a Notre Dame quarterback?" Well, she busted my balls for the whole year. <laughs> She said, Coach, she said, you know, Terry's in my class, along with uh, Ron Bushney, along with uh, Bob Kuchemer. And he said, how many tickets you need, sister? <laughs> If you do well, you know, you, I wouldn't be in this problem. So, and he, he called me, we were ahead of somebody, he said, look on the 50, there it is. He said, look up on the 50. Four penguins. <laughs> <laughs> and she, he said, come on, wave to them. <laughs> She called up Eric. We both had, you know, it was a five credit course, right? So if you got a B, you got really well. If you didn't have because I never had one. Uh, it was like. <laughs> but uh, she said, listen, if Ron and Terry would stay for two weeks with her in the convent, eight hours a day, whatever grade they get for those two weeks, I'll give them as a final. And Eric jumped all over because I'm like, you got a shot at an A, five credit A, right? Well, we went through a hurricane, a tornado, we're down that basement with the nun. And we had, and Ron the whole time was saying, sister, you know, she was going, she was getting 15 bucks an hour, and she was allowed to keep it because she was going to New York for her training. And so she was collecting that on us, and Ron had a 1965 red Corvette. Ooh. Right? I had a 1964 maroon Corvair. <laughs> so the whole time, though, she says, sister, I'll get you to New York, don't worry. Keep trying to get the better grade, right? But we both ended up getting a B. But in the last day, she said, Ron, when are you going to pick me up in this Corvette to go to New York, right? And I was going home from school. So I knew best, so I had my Corvette, the front seat packed to the ceiling, the back seat packed, and the trunk, nothing. <laughs> and here's Percy going down the hot turnpike, smoking like a fiend, and then Brent, uh, Sister Sephardi was sitting there with, the, with, the, with their outfit on, right? Just cruising down the hill. And I just had the best time doing that. We did, ended up dropping her in Pittsburgh, and she said, Well, we're going to Butler, my hometown, 30 miles away. She said, When are you coming back to pick me up? Said, I'm not taking you to the airport. I said, Ron, the best thing you can do is give her a cab fare. And leave about as tight as you can possibly get it. But, and the more serious part, I need to get serious, but, you know, when you try to measure things in life, a lot of people say, what's your Mount Rushmore of uh, Notre Dame players or Yankee greats or whatever? My Mount Rushmore of Notre Dame would be Father Soren, Newt Rockne, Father Hesper, and Era. And we are so fortunate, because we were, 50% of the Mount Rushmore was us. We were here. For those integral parts of both Hesburgh and Hera, and we got a chance to know them. And I was so pleased that, that I got to really become friendly with Father Hesburgh and Hera. And, uh, you know, we knew we, Father Ted and Father Ned had come to practice, and we thought they were the parish priest. We were so stupid, we had no clue how powerful Father Hesburgh was, right? Hey, Father, you know about you know? And, uh, but when my son came here, you know, we sort of drifted apart here, like everybody who does in life. You know, they have families, they move here, and then, you know, come back to school as much as they'd like to. But uh, when my son came here, and I bought a house here, and I said, you know, and I would stay when there's back-to-back home games. And I said, I must renew our friendship. So I went to Father Hesper, and I called Julie up, or not Julie, secretary, right now? Okay. And uh, I said, and she said, I'm going to schedule you last day. I would always go during the week because weekends, everybody in the world. And so I would have the basic of, you know, a couple hours with them. 
And we talked about the best time. The first time there, I, she says, well, do you mind if Father Ted has a cigar while you're smoking, or while he's in there? I said, no, he doesn't mind me smoking my cigarette while we're together. <laughs> so here's two old bastards in there, smoking a cigarette, smoking a cigar, talking about old times. But it, it was truly, when I think about what we spoke about, and we actually went to our grave, he went to a grave, and, <laughs> right nice not over though. But, uh, same things that we'd never repeat to anybody else. And to have him as that kind of a friendship was, was absolutely wonderful. And the last year that I saw him was in October, I believe, before he died in that, that winter. And uh, I could tell we were sitting in there, I'm in there about an hour, we're talking back and forth. And um, I said, I looked at him and said, buddy, you look a little tired. Now, you know, maybe we want to cut this with short. He said, yeah, I'm a little tired. But every time when I leave, I'd always say, would you give me your blessing? He'd always give me his blessing. And so this time he said, well, you got to hand a big old chair, a really comfortable chair. So I lift him out of the chair. And I sat him, stand him up. I said, you okay now? Yeah, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Just get my walker behind you. I give a better blessing with my walker. <laughs> and I saw him hold him. You, you sure you're all right? Give him a little wider base there. So I let him go, he's fine. I take two steps back. <laughs> two steps back, and all of a sudden I turn around, <laughs> oh my God, he falls right into his chair. He falls the other way, the headlines, Hesburger died on the end of his watch. <laughs> so I yell, Melanie, she's like, are you Melanie? So she comes running in, and the, and the, uh, the two ladies are watching after her, oh, he does that all the time. <laughs> But, and one other person, I'll wrap up here, is probably the, the uh, other than my father, the most influential man in my life was there. And it was more than a coaching thing here. And I'll never forget, I was, I was ready to go to Michigan State. You know, Duffy Doherty was a great coach, great guy. I visited up there a couple times. And uh, I get a call from John Ray. He said, Eric's gonna be in Pittsburgh, can you meet him? So we go down to the old Hellman Hotel and we're meeting for lunch, and they bring out the menu, right? I'm over there, you know, I never had a real steak until they started recruiting me. <laughs> you know, those chippy steaks, those things you chew for about a half hour, and you know, a lot of But I looked at them on a steak sandwich, and I went, whoa! Then I looked at the 350, he's gonna think I'm gouging him. <laughs> so I got the club sandwich for a buck and a quarter, with the fries up. <laughs> but, uh, after that, we were there for about two, two hours. He knew I was from a separated family. He knew the product. This kid's going to need a little more guidance, I'm sure. But we had such a, a great relationship. And it's right then that I said, you know, I'm going to Notre Dame. I told him. And uh, so we departed. I went home and told my mother. And she thought I was all set to go to Michigan State. And I said, I, I cannot not spend the next four years with this, without this guy. He was that strong. But. Uh, we did 50. If you would have given the over under 50 years ago, George Kunz with Bob Belvin and a bunch of others would be take the over. Myself, Harpo, and Tom Rattles, you'd take the under. <laughs> we all made it. God bless you. Until Notre Dame.
choices.